One DX Mark Three, baby. The Canon EOS 1DX Mark III is Canon's latest flagship camera, a professional DSLR intended for high-end sports, wildlife and photojournalism. Canon believes that the optical viewfinder is the ultimate pro tool for one reason – speed. Even the best electronic viewfinder inherently suffers lag. If an EVF experiences just 110 milliseconds of lag, a DSLR can capture two to three images before the mirrorless camera has even seen the action. Not only has Canon bucked the trend of mirrorless and EVFs, it has also bucked the trend with its sensor. The 1DX Mark III uses a 20.1 megapixel sensor, compared to the 24.2 megapixel sensor of Sony's flagship A9 Mark II camera. However, Canon insists that thanks to a redesigned low-pass filter, which uses quad-layer 16-point subsampling instead of dual-layer 4-point subsampling combined with a Gaussian distribution technique, it's able to achieve sharpness and resolution equal to that seen in a 24-megapixel sensor. The 1DX Mark III also boasts a brand new Digic X processor. The 1DX3's processor is 380 times faster in terms of computational processing and 3.1 times faster at image processing than the 1DX Mark II was. Canon claims that the 1DX Mark III has one stop better dynamic range than the Mark II, and this is complemented by the support of a new image format, HEIF or HEF files. Based on the H.264 codec, this 10-bit format offers superior fidelity than the 8-bit JPEGs, and it's four times more efficient, meaning that you can capture images with four times the amount of data in the exact same file size, though the camera does still support JPEG as well as RAW imaging. This kind of wizardry enables the camera to record the camera's wide dynamic range and output it to HDR standards. The 1DX Mark III also supports HDRPQ, which stands for Perceptual Quantizer, which is a gamma curve that matches what the human eye sees. This is similar to Hybrid Log Gamma, which going forward will be an industry standard across all screens. The 1DX3 is capable of shooting 16 frames per second using the lag-free optical viewfinder and the mechanical shutter, or up to 20 frames per second in live view with either the mechanical or the electronic shutter. Optical shooting uses a 400,000 pixel metering sensor in conjunction with a Digic 8 processor to enable face detection via the 191 AF points, 155 of which are cross type. Live view shooting, meanwhile, makes full use of the 20.1 million pixels on the image sensor, combined with a Digic X processor to offer full eye tracking as well, thanks to the superior mirrorless focusing ability that features 3,869 AF points. These focusing systems are powered by the much ballyhooed Deep Learning AF, which Canon calls EOS ITR AFX. Canon used the image databases of all the major photo agencies, as well as images from its own ambassadors, to give this deep learning algorithm millions of images to teach itself how to recognize human figures, and specifically how to prioritize the human head, regardless of whether the face is visible, whether it's looking the other way, or even whether it's obscured by goggles or helmets. However, this is far from a true learning AI, as the name would suggest. More on this in a moment. Canon is definitely playing catch-up in the video sphere. The cropped 4K of the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R have obviously received a lot of barbs from the industry. Thankfully, the 1DX Mark III now offers full-width 4K video via 5.5K oversampling. You can now record internal 12-bit 4K DCI RAW at up to 60 frames per second, although AF and tracking is only supported up to 30 frames per second. However, 1080p video can record all the way up to 120 frames per second with full AF and tracking. And after all the kerfuffle about missing 24 frames per second in recent cameras, 24p will be added to the 1DX3 in forthcoming firmware. For working pros, the 1DX Mark III is packed with cutting-edge communications features. It has built-in Bluetooth and 2.4GHz Wi-Fi, as well as a gigabit Ethernet connection that supports standards including 1000 Base-T. 
However, unlike the Sony A92, it doesn't feature built-in 5 GHz Wi-Fi. You'll need to buy the separate WFT E9 module for that. So I'm here in Ascari in beautiful Spain, just outside Marbella, and I've been shooting the 1DX Mark III on this fantastic circuit here, which has all the best corners from all the best tracks in the world. And I have to say, very impressed. Um, didn't expect anything less. It's in a lot of ways, as with all of these um, professional cameras, the same with the, the Sony A9 II, it's structurally very similar to its predecessor. So if you've used the 1DX Mark II or even the, the original 1DX, or even the EOS One. These are all very, very familiar cameras. Primarily, the main thing here that we've got on this camera is the smart control function, which sort of, it, it either replaces or complements the joystick, depending on how you view these things. Basically, the joystick is, is good. It gives you very granular, very fine, very precise control, but it's not very quick, it's not very fast. Uh, gliding your thumb, across um, the smart control. It's kind of like using an optical mouse. It's that kind of speed, uh, speed and precision. So once you're used to sort of just literally just knocking the AF point around the screen, it's so quick, it's so fast, and it becomes second nature very, very quickly to the point that I haven't actually used the joystick for anything other than navigating the menus. To my mind, the, the smart controller is um, what the multifunction bar on the EOS R probably should have been. Maybe that was uh, a stepping stone technology to this. Maybe it's completely different, I don't know, but um, this certainly feels like it would have a place on many other cameras and in, in such a small position as well. It's not like it takes up a huge amount of space. So uh, the camera, uh, it still feels like a beast. I mean, it's built like a tank. It's supposed to be a big, durable, heavy, solid thing, um, but uh, I'm told it's 100 grams lighter. It doesn't in the hand feel 100, gram li 100 grams lighter, but it doesn't feel overwhelmingly big and bulky either. CF Express is just a little bit of a revelation. Um, uh, the, the term unlimited buffer was used. I can't remember if that was an uh, offhand remark by a Canon person here or if that was an actual thing that was touted. But it feels like, for all intents and purposes, an, an unlimited buffer. I mean, it lets you shoot bursts of a thousand raw files. That's, that's more than you're ever going to need. It doesn't matter what kind of action you're shooting, that's going to be sufficient to shoot it. The autofocus, uh, it does feel more sticky isn't the right word, but it feels uh, feels attack more precise, a little bit more precise. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a major revelation, but you feel supremely confident. Uh, maybe that's the best way to put it. There's 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 no unassuredness with this camera. Um, we were shooting uh, either panning shots or you know cars going over lips in the track and coming towards the camera. There's never fear that okay, I'm not going to get the shot at this moment which is due to a lot of things in terms of the, the new processor, the Digic X processor. It's in terms of the uh, massively improved um, sensor AF um, and the deep learning, which, which was a little bit, it seems to be a bit of a misnomer. So we were told, uh, as everybody sort of read the spec sheets and, and had the same announcements, that this camera has deep learning AI. And it does have deep learning AI, but deep learning is the name of the technology. It doesn't mean that this camera is in a constant learning process. It's more accurate to say that this has deep learned AI, past tense. It has already learned all it's going to learn. This is not intelligent in the sense that it won't get better at AI, it won't get better at AF as you use it more. It will only ever be this good or as good as they improve it in firmware, which I understand is possible. And uh, Canon has sort of intimated that yes, with future firmware updates, uh, they can uh, evolve the AF algorithm. So maybe we can expand that to animal AF or animal IAF, which isn't a part of uh, this camera presently, but it's never going to learn as you shoot. So I think that was probably, uh, I don't think it was an intentional uh, attempt to mislead because it, it's deep learning technology, that's what it's called, but it doesn't learn. It's not a learning machine that you can teach and make it better at shooting what you shoot. Um, but having said that, the knowledge it's already got, certainly for the traditional sort of motorsports and um, athletics, gymnastics, um, anything that involves a human figure, this AF has got it pretty sorted. Uh, the secret seems to be that it's recognizing and prioritizing the head so it's not necessarily important whether or not there are eyes in the shot. It understands that the human figure and the head is probably, whether the eyes are visible or not, whether they're closed or the head's looking the other way, 
it understands the head is the is the, probably the primary point of focus. So, for example, if you've got uh, uh, runners or ski jumpers or something with with numbers on the chest or a you know a, a basketball jersey with it could be quite tempting if the face isn't visible that it would focus on those details as i understand it this will always prioritize the head whether the you're taking a shot from behind maybe a ski jumper is going that way it'll always focus on the head and not the the detail in the uniform or the skis or anything else or the background so that's that's where a lot of the the smartness has gone in terms of this camera little things like the illuminated buttons uh really really welcome that was a, a massive win for the, uh, the Panasonic S1s. The fact that the button's illuminated on the back of the camera, I think every camera should have that. The ferocious frame rate, so we're doing 20 frames per second in uh, live view, 16 frames per second mechanical shutter. So you've got that lightning fast electronic frame rate, but optically, the optical viewfinder is the only way to achieve lag-free shooting. Uh, and in, it, it's a matter of milliseconds, but those milliseconds can be the difference between firing off two or three extra shots or being able to start firing off shots before the guy next to you who's shooting electronically and that really is the the backbone of this camera compared to something like the Sony A9 II which does a lot of singing and dancing about um, zero blackout through the EVF and that kind of thing at the end of the day light does have to be turned into photons and does have to pass through here and then hit a sensor and then be processed and hit another sensor, then be turned into a signal to come through the EVF and then trans uh, being transmitted to the eye. So there is always going to be that lag, that delay, and shooting optically, that simply doesn't exist. Uh, the video is an interesting one. It does 5.5K uh, oversampled 12-bit internal raw recording, which is great, um, but only does AF 4K30, doesn't do AF 4K60, which is interesting. Autofocusing, as you'd expect from the dual pixel in video mode, is razor sharp, rock solid, no problems at all there. So it's going to be a fairly formidable video beast. And it also has the benefit of, with the two card slots, of being able to split the recording to record simultaneously uh, RAW on one card and MP4 on another card. So uh, again, that's one of the many benefits of this fantastic new CF Express card which enables you to, to transfer speed, transfer data at such speeds, such incredible speeds and not just in terms of recording and capturing but also dumping these images afterwards because when you do these massive bursts of images you need to be able to transfer them to your laptop at the end of the day or between setups even if you're, if you're a working pro. See you in a bit. Overall, the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III is every inch the premium performing powerhouse that you'd expect it to be. Offering the best of optical DSLR speed and mirrorless accuracy, it delivers true hybrid shooting for professionals who can't afford to miss a millisecond of the action. But does that make it the ultimate professional camera? The Sony A92 still packs some tangible advantages, including a higher res 24 megapixel sensor, 5 axis image stabilization, animal autofocus, a tilting LCD screen, integrated 5 GHz Wi Fi, transcribed voice tagging, the short term convenience of supporting SD cards, as well as an electronic viewfinder that, milliseconds of lag notwithstanding, is unquestionably up to the task. And of course, the A92 is much smaller and virtually half the weight at 675 grams versus the 1250 grams of the 1DX3. Still, the 1DX does have the speed advantage with its optical shooting, and it has superior video specs. It boasts a cutting-edge image format and a cutting-edge memory card. It has a battery that lasts four times longer, and it has the fantastic new smart controller, which is likely to become an industry standard. While you'd think that Sony's top dog mirrorless camera would be the most technologically advanced, it's actually Canon's throwback DSLR that boasts the most forward-thinking tech. And that's really what it comes down to here, because both cameras actually perform about on par. But the difference is that the 1DX Mark III has the technology of tomorrow. If you're still happy using SD cards, shooting at 4K30 and taking JPEGs in the year 2020, the Sony A92 is absolutely fine for you. 
However, just like Apple forcing everybody to use USB-C if they buy a new MacBook, if you want to be prepared for what the decade of 2020 has in store, then CF Express cards, 4K60 and HEF files make the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III a more compelling choice for professionals. If you still want to be using your camera for the 2028 Olympics, the 1DX Mark III is probably the camera for you.